introduced to the ring. I'm pretty sure he's never been introduced this way. But he is a New Zealand champion in his own right. He brings to the squared circle an undefeated record. He is the current and reigning Prime Minister of New Zealand. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable John Key! It's great to see you here tonight. You having a good time? We had a long tradition of producing some fantastic boxers, boxers and David Tours in that group. I saw him out the back before. He's looking strong. He's looking relaxed. He's looking ready for a big fight. So get behind him tonight and we're going to see David Tour bring home the goods. Have a wonderful evening. Enjoy yourself. Have a nice night at Waitakere Stadium. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honourable John Key. Tua, Tua, Tua. Tua, 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 Tua. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Woodstock's Fight Night main event of the evening. Once again, this event is brought to you by Woodstock Bourbon and Cola. If you have a drink over in Easter, by Woodstock Bourbon and Crack a Woody. This is also presented by Damon Higgins and John McRae from Duco Events in association with Cedric Kushner's Gotham Boxing. From White Tackery City to the world. Home to great events, vineyards, rainforests, and beaches. White Tackery City, a great place to work and play. This bout is scheduled for 12 three-minute rounds of championship heavyweight boxing! It is for the Asia Pacific and Oriental heavyweight titles. And now, for the thousands in attendance here at the Trust Stadium and the people watching this broadcast, on Murray Television around the world. Would somebody, somewhere, please make some noise? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, introduce our first the challenger, making his way to the blue corner. Here is So Friday begins to make his way in. Gained fame here in New Zealand because he beat Shane Cameron. He was the first man to do that. At that time, it was the NABA and WBO Asia Pacific Championship. And that's what he's fighting for tonight. He's a very, very good boxer when he was in his prime. But he hasn't been active the past couple of years. In 08, he had a 10-round unanimous decision victory over Lonzo Butler. No fights last year. He's fought very well in losing efforts against the world-class heavyweights like Sergei Lyakovich, Alexander Povetkin, and Sultan Ibrahimov. So he'll give David Tua all he can handle tonight. His goal, Dale, of course, if he wins this fight, he's immediately in the title of contention. A big, big fight for both men, of course. Uh, special guest commentator, 40 years in the business, 10,000 fights he's called. Making his way to the red corner. This is David Tua. Lieutenant Dan Hennessy really into it. And here comes David Tua. This is why everybody's here. Not only is this the WBO Asia Pacific and WBO Oriental Championship fight, 
But Ray Wheatley, the vice president of the IBF, who uh, publishes that uh, World of Boxing magazine, told me that the IBF is watching this fight very, very closely, and Tua might be in line for a world title shot there, so that's something we didn't know. Well, Colonel Bob, it's great to have you in New Zealand, and of course you've seen some of the best heavyweights in the business going around. For our Kiwi people, David Tua embodies a dream. We all rode with him when he went down to Lennox Lewis, when he was given that chance. But we're all hopeful that after tonight he may get another. And of course that is a big ask too. He's 37 now, but one of the most popular sportsmen ever in New Zealand. And the way that he honours both Samoa and New Zealand as his home is appreciated by Kiwis right throughout the country. He's a wonderful ambassador for his sport and for his people, and a very humble man who has a, a great deal of uh, affection for what Māori television is trying to do. And I note, time and time again, he, uh, he, he looks at Māori television, does his me. Let's have a look at their records now. Yeah, David Tua, 50 victories, three losses, a draw. 43 knockouts, the Tuominator, his mother Noella, his dad, Tuivella watching the fight. Noella doesn't like to come to the fights, but she loves to hear that his son has won. So we know they're all watching Maori television, and we're certainly thrilled to talk to you about the tremendous atmosphere in this Duco Events production here at the uh, Trust Arena in Auckland, New Zealand. We welcome all our audience not only in New Zealand, but across the United States and part of the Bella Entertainment and Golf and Boxing. Everybody watching across the country of Australia and of course Tonga and Samoa. And to the people of Samoa, Talofa Lava. And to uh, Tuavali's village, uh, Falea too. And to Noella's village, who we tuned in and hoping that their son does them proud. Noella's village is uh, Fasi Tuatai. David to his only losses to world champions Lennox Lewis and Chris Bird, and to a guy who would have been world champion had he not gotten incarcerated, I could be a Bucci. All 12 round fights, so David's never been stopped, never been down, and Ahunanya has never been knocked out and never down either. Somebody's going down tonight, I just have that feeling. David's been working on the right hand power shots, hooking, and uppercuts, and we'll see if he has it tonight. David Tua, the favorite son of everybody watching Maori television. You better believe it, Colonel Bob Sheridan. I tell you what, this place is going ballistic. And so they should. They've waited a long time for this night. You know, Dale, I've done 883 world title fights. This has all the atmosphere and excitement and the enthusiasm of the crowd here that you would have in a world championship fight. I'm actually, I get the hair sticking up on the back of my neck and, and chills with the excitement of this fight, the anticipation of what David Tua might do. Well, you've seen his career unfold before your eyes. Look at this, now we got a king is at it. We had the prime minister and the Burger King guy showed up in the corner. This Friday, Ahunanya, 24 and five, three get, draws. Did you take a quick look at the tail of the tape by Hunan? He's taller by a couple of inches. He's going to be lighter than David Tua by just a little bit. As you take a look at the age, he's a couple of years older, but he has a six inch advantage in reach. They're both coming off wins. He's in terrific shape, David Tua. And he is full of purpose. Of course, last time he lined it up, uh, or lined up, excuse me, against Shane Cameron. There's a bit on that because there's a bit of needle winning before the fight. Not so this time around. They need respect between the two combatants. David Tua knows that he's got work to do. This is his workplace. Your matchmaker tonight is Boa Athu. And when the bell rings, the international referee in charge is Mr. Gary Dean. the ring wearing white trunks. He weighed it in 104.1 kgs. He hails from Nigeria but calls Las Vegas, Nevada home. He is trained by Luis Tapia. His last two fights were wins over two heavyweights 
with a combined record of 46, 0, and 1. He is the former two-time NABA champion, the former Asia Pacific heavyweight champion, and the former PABA champion. He has 32 professional fights with 24 wins, five losses, and three draws. With 13 big wins coming by way of KO, introducing the challenger, Friday the 13th, Ohunaye! and representing South Auckland, New Zealand. He is trained by Roger Bloodworth. He won the bronze medal at the 1982 Olympics in Barcelona. He is the former number one ranked contender in the WBO, WBC, and IBF. He is currently and reigning as the Asia Pacific Oriental Heavyweight Champion. He remains on the list of the top 50 heaviest punchers in any division of all times. He has 54 professional fights with 50 wins, three losses and one draw. With 43 big wins coming by way of KO. Introducing the people's champion of our Tanoa, David, the Juvenator. Well, what an introduction. It is now time for the referee's instructions. Get the heads out of the action. Let's have a fair fight. Touch gloves. Come on, let's go. All right, the third man in the ring is Gary Dean from Australia. Unified rules of boxing, 10-point must scoring system, no standing eight count. There's no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Only the referee can stop the fight. If we get into any uh, situations with his head butts involved, I'll explain the rule to you as it becomes pertinent to this fight. This is David Tua in great shape, about 238 pounds of 108.7 kilos. A little bit heavier than Friday Ahunanya, who's a couple of inches taller than David Tua and has a couple of inches advantage in reach. Can Ahonanya hold him off and get himself a shot at the world title? Or can David Tua take him out with lethal uppercuts, left hands and right hands? That's what it's all about. A lot of worldwide ramifications to the outcome of this particular fight. It's a great pleasure to have you calling the action on Māori television, Colonel Bob Sheridan. Thanks. Over 850 uh, uh, world title fights. And here in West Auckland, New Zealand, witnessing the reinvigoration of boxing through David Tua. And we are underway with the main event. Here we go. Tua right in front of him sets up Ahunanya. Wants to fight from out here. This is exactly where he wants to be. He let's go with the first jab of the fight. David will feel him on the first couple of seconds and we'll see some power come immediately after that. David just uh, testing what uh, Ahunanya is going to do. And this is what Ahunanya has to do. Stay outside the kill zone and try to move. David will paw his way in, try to work downstairs. Ahunanya reaches him with a light left hand. David hasn't unloaded a shot yet. He's just getting himself in a position. This is kind of the way he started out with Shane Cameron. David knows exactly what he wants to do in there. Wants to test this guy. Ahunanya would like to land something with power. Get David's attention immediately. David trying to work his way in. You see the feint, the light left jab. There's David with the first uppercut. And now he feels the power for the first time. Ahunanya makes a mistake that deal right away. He doesn't grab onto him. He keeps his hands free. He doesn't want to fight this guy in the inside. I can assure you of that as the chat for Tua goes up. And what a massive chance it is. It's David Tua looking decidedly similar as uh, Colonel Bob has mentioned to the strategy adopted a few months ago with the uh, Shane Cameron fight. But he hasn't thrown much yet. He's thrown a couple of body shots. And to let uh, Ahunanya 
know that he's in here for business. He has a certain respect for Friday Ahu Nainya too. He doesn't want to, you know, have to gobble up any punishment in the early going here. He wants Ahu Nainya to feel his pressure and feel his power first and not allow Ahu Nainya. You see the nice head movement of David uh, forcing Ahu Nainya to miss. Now that's not ring rust for Ahu Nainya. That's a, a situation where a guy at uh, 39 years of age doesn't have the same zip on his punches or the same radar that he once had. This isn't the same guy that fought Lyakovich and uh, Povetkin and Sultan Ibragimov. Granted, he's been off for a couple of years, year and a half anyway. But David Tua is moving into the kill range. David looking to throw that big right uppercut on the inside. Instead, he throws a combination that's the left hook. That gets the crowd roaring early. There's no uh, uh, loss of power, even though he's been out of the ring for some time. And that was an enforced layoff. And in some ways, he could take the camp of uh, Shane Cameron for bringing him back up to speed, for getting the passion back in there. And his family's in behind him. He can see that there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. That's if he can keep his head and do what needs to be done. And what needs to be done here tonight is an emphatic, emphatic victory. At the moment, both fighters just feeling themselves, as would be expected in the 12-rounder. And uh, David Tua will go to the uh, end of the first. It's an interesting uh, scoring in the third round, first round, because David hasn't done much. And as the bell sounds, he finally unleashes the left hand. But David didn't really land anything in that round. Although he was the aggressor through most of the round, so it'll be interesting to see how they score that. David Tua with uh, Jim Strickland and uh, Roger Bloodworth as trainer. Roger doing the talking. And as you can see, David coming in, got a couple of shots away on Friday. Not enough to trouble with the big Nigerian. As we get into round two, we could see some explosive bombs here if the, uh, uh, what the tipsters predicted will occur. But Friday Ahunanya obviously has uh, different ideas to that. He looks in good trim, doesn't he? Uh, he is in good uh, shape. David Tua now has a nice sweat built up, and he, he's ready to go. I think he'll open up a little bit more here now in the second round and try to land something definitively. The judges, Brad Vocali of Australia, Bob Gibson of here in New Zealand, 82-year-old buddy of mine for many, many years, judging the fight, and Michael Heafy from Australia, the three official judges. David hasn't landed the big blow yet, and there's always that anticipation. He's parring with a left hand, but when he throws that left hand, you'll know it. As he throws it with malice of forethought. Friday the 13th, trying to hold him off with a jab, and the jab won't hold David off. Although that was a pretty crisp jab right in the forehead of David Tua. Tua really hasn't opened up yet with this guy. Moving back and forth is Friday Ahunanya, sliding to the right, comes in with a left hook of his own. Luis Tapia, who trained Ahunanya, said that he has the fight plan to be able to beat David. So far, so good for Friday. This isn't where he wants to be. And David loves to push him in against the ropes. Ahunanya quite wisely moves away, rolls across the ropes to get out of trouble. He was held up in the corner there by Tua. You've got to remember, Tua's career might be 54 fights long, but he landed his first New Zealand heavyweight title as an amateur as a 16-year-old way back in 1989, 21 years ago. That's how long he's been in the game and why he uh, is so confident once he gets into what he calls home. That's in the ring. Friday actually has landed more punches. There was a big blast, but it was taken on the hip of Friday Ahunanya on the protector down there, so no damage was done whatsoever by that left hook of David Tua. Friday moving back and forth. He's fighting a perfect strategy right now. He doesn't want to hang that left hand down because David can throw a right, too. And there he goes. I, I, I got to give Friday some credit. He's, he's doing a nice job avoiding. David is trying to stalk him and set him up for either a right hand uppercut or a left hand. That's the left hook. Well, you've got the left hook. You've got the straight jab, which can also be very powerful. Power jab as well. So, right in a place to hide in there for a Big Friday. Not that he necessarily is trying to. If anything, just trying to move around, frustrate David, which will no doubt be part of uh, his fight plan that he's devised there with Lewis Tapia. Well, what he's doing is he's moving to his left to try to avoid that hook. As I say that, David lands two hooks. He doesn't want to move to his right because he'd be moving into the right-hand power of David Tua. But Friday's fighting the perfect uh, the perfect game plan right now through the first round and most of the second round. David's won the second round because Friday hasn't really landed too much here. 
I'd say if you just come here to, to wrap it up into the final 10 seconds of round two. A little bit more action from the tour man. So the bill ends the second round. That's a tour round. But it's all about uh, scoring shots, is it not? And you're not going to get there if you don't keep busy. The front out of Nanya three, very few in the second round. David Tua capitalised, and by our scorecard, anyway, Colonel Bob looking like picked up that second uh, second round. Maybe the first one even, but certainly the second today. Yeah, it, lo it looks that way because Ahunani didn't land much of anything, and David sunk that pretty good left hook in there, and then he had the one to the body that might steal the eyes of the judges. Here we go, round three, the Colonel Bob Shorten here with Dale Husband. Uh, we're at ringside in Auckland, New Zealand, as David Tua trying to get himself in position for a world title shot, and Ahunanya looking for the upset of his career to stop David Tua. David now throwing right hands in round three. We haven't seen too many right hands so far. Lewis Tapia has Ahunanya executing his fight plan perfectly through two rounds. We're in the third round now as he continues to circle to his left. He doesn't want to go back to his right because he doesn't want to go into the real power of David Tua. But Tua can hurt you with either hand. And Ahunanya, I'm sure, is aware of that. He's trying to stay outside. As soon as David comes in, you see him move back. He's up in the toe. So he's executing the fight plan. Sooner or later, he's going to have to engage with David because he just can't give rounds away. And that's what's happening here too. He's, he's moving away, being elusive and evasive. But I don't think he can hold back the, the uh, tour man for too long. Or the, the tour manator, as he's uh, as he's popularly known. The uppercut is there for David Tour if he can uh, just work his, uh, himself in and catch this guy as he moves to a corner. As the Ahunani is slick, as he moves down the corner, he kind of spins his body and slides right down the next rope. But David has to step up in there and stop him from doing that. Then he can land some shots. He's got him in position right now, and Ahunani blasts his way and jabs his way out of there pretty good. Didn't seem to trouble David, though. A wry smile from him as he tries to set up. Heads downstairs for the rip to the body. Gets a nice one in on Ahunanya. Ahunanya fighting the perfect game plan right now. David has got uh, tuned up pretty good, and uh, Ahunanya landed the left hand and then the right hand behind it. So Friday is fighting well, but he's fighting cautiously against the power of David. And you hey, you got to fight cautiously when you fight this guy. David really banged him on the ribs with that right hand. That's a punch that, you know, people watching the arena, they won't think much of that, but that can really take a toll on a guy. David trying to work downstairs. Ahunanya doing a nice job defensively. Bad position for him right now. Tua can let fly with the uppercut right here and can land it. David didn't choose to take the opportunity to do that. Another reminder to Dale we want the audience to know it's very, very humid in here and very hot. So we get beyond three, four, five rounds here. Things could be a, become a problem for Tua, who in his prime of his career would have a tendency to have some problems in later rounds of fights. Ahunanya whacked him in the back of the head that time. David needs to come with an uppercut now. He's Is snapping it? off his own jab. Ahunanya caught him with a pretty good jab that time. David's really got a lather of sweat worked up now. Well, this is what the crowd have come to see. And uh, the fighters that have beaten David in his career have outfoxed him. We're talking Bird and we're talking Lewis. And this is very cagey, uh, cagey work here from Ahunanya, although he finds himself in the corner and Tua unleashes a couple. Ahunanya survives. Tua back into his corner, good round. As David Tua. It's very warm, very humid in here. You notice one thing, though, Dale. He's not huffing and puffing a lot. That's a good indication. He's got to tune it up a bit. I gave two of the third round, but uh, it's possible that some judges you watch this replay, based on some of these nice jabs here, could give that round to Ahunanya. So there's been two close rounds in this fight, round one and round three. I thought Tua won the second round. But the heavy blows are still being landed by David. And in professional boxing, it's about the hurt business. We go to round four. Colonel Bob Sheridan here with Dale Husband. You're watching Maori TV. Glad that you're going to be with us wherever you're watching around the world and especially across the country of New Zealand. David Tua in the black trucks. Blast him. And there's the shot up still. Nice movement by Ahunanya by moving his trunk up and down so David couldn't hit him a second or third time. 
Ahunanya responds with a, a right cross and collects David Tua, who had him in the corner, let rip with a few, but Ahunanya survives. Ahunanya, remember, in the first uh, couple of rounds, was able to move all the time, and towards the end of the third round, allowed himself to get caught in the corner. He opened up the fourth round that same way, and David unleashed a barrage, but only caught him one time. It slightly buckled him, but he was in the process of moving up and down, so he didn't take the full brunt of David to his power. And Friday was able to battle back and land a couple of shots of his own. David's trying to position himself now, and in the uppercut, I keep telling you, is there, and David hasn't thrown it yet. He's reaching with his left hand, which is not a good idea. Now, this guy is taller, and this guy has a longer reach, so David. You know, having a little bit of difficulty, but this is the situation with every guy that David fights. The guy's taller. Well, he's always having to work from the inside, commanding center ring, of course, but Ahunanya being cagey, skillful, and elusive. He's working around the ropes, just popping off with that left jab. Scoring points with it, but not really hurting David Tour. Perhaps the humidity might hurt him more as Tour lets rip with another body shot. And that body shot, Dale, I mentioned it before and I had before. He's not going to be able to take 15 or 20 of those body shots throughout the course of the fight. That's the second real hard body shot that David's hit him with. And again, that's the type of punch that, you know, people that are sitting back afar here at the arena, you people actually watching on Mali TV at home have a better view of and, and, and can see the power that he's blasting to the body. And David keeps hitting that rib. Pretty soon that left hand of Ahunanya will come down and open up the right hand to David. Right now, Ahunanya doing a decent job boxing. David showing enough movement, even though he sets up in front of him and comes straight in. He moves his head enough just to make Ahunanya miss. Although he bounced one off the top of the head of David that time, getting a smile on the face of David. That's frustration a little bit. 19 seconds ago in the fourth round. But again, based on that one big flurry in the early going, David has won this round in my score sheet. Now, there's no question that I'm a David Tua fan, but I'll try to give you the fair call and the fair assessment of how, who's winning these rounds. So it's all gone out of the 12 scheduled, and it is all David Tua at the moment. Friday Ahunanya is trying to stay out of trouble. Tua is forced to come at him, forced to uh, to come forward to him, and is let rip with a couple of good body shots. But Ahunanya, to his credit, is hanging on in there, using his evasive skills and sliding across the rope, staying out of trouble. So uh, he's still keeping himself in with a chance, Ahunanya, but he's got to start throwing some big ones, Colonel Bob. Well, Ahunanya didn't do in the last round what he did in the first couple of rounds. He's trying to do it now, and that's get back up at his toes and creep back into this fight. But right now, uh, Friday's got some problems with David coming right at him. I know a lot of Kiwis will have, have expectations that David should get in there and finish off Friday the 13th. But remember, neither of these men have been stopped before or put away. And so, uh, you know, that's a big ask for David to him. Not well, to say it won't happen. Ahunanya actually hasn't been down in his career, so... You know, David almost had him out there in the uh, in the fourth round. He was one good shot away from dropping him, but Friday's back to his fight plan again, up on his toes and moving around pretty good. David, on the other hand, has really never been hit badly, and that's why he's still at 37 years of age. He's uh, very much a chance of going on to the world title, given that opportunity. Is that body shot again that I, I'm telling you will take its toll on Ahunanya and cause that left arm to come down. The chant in the arena here in Auckland goes up. Tua, Tua. They want to see him knock this guy out. And David wants it in the worst way. Tough body shots. Two big body shots. Ahunanya, you know, looks and he has the expression on his face like it didn't hurt him. But believe me, you don't take body shots like that that it doesn't hurt you. You notice his hands come right back down. Ahunanya is not given the good movement that he was in the first couple of rounds. He's not able to execute the excellent fight plan that uh, Louis Tapia had set up for him at this stage of the fight. So I, I feel like David's coming on now and, and catching up with him a bit. See him stopping more now? It's a bad idea because David will measure him. And the uppercut is there, and David hasn't thrown it yet. When he does, he's going to catch Ahunanya. And that's the one he can drop him with. David again reaches and blasts him. Now that's the fourth hard shot to that left side of the rib cage of Friday. About four or five more of those, and Friday won't be able to lift his left arm. We've got another one in there, and another and another. So Ahunanya in trouble. He slides away again, but not before. A couple of big shots are landed there by Tua. 
Yeah, David is landing more frequently now, and he's landing with more power. Every once in a while, Friday sneaks one through like he didn't then. But David is trying to set up the big shot. He's not uh, really at the point where he's, you know, he's, he's panicking. He's doing what he wants to do. He's moving the fight in the direction he wants. He has Ahunanya flat-footed in the center of the ring right now, which is where David could really do some damage with an uppercut. I'm just waiting for it with the anticipation because it is there, believe me. A couple of more body shots, especially to the left side of the rib cage of Ahunanya, and he's going to have that. You see that hand keeping coming down, and he's not getting it back up, so the right hand is there for David as well. Ahunanya doing a little bit better job executing the fight plan right now at this stage, but David gets that body with two hard body shots again. These would paralyze some fighters. It shows you how tough Ahunanya is. Ahunani gets off a decent left hook at the bell, but that's a two around. Another round of the throwing some on. Anticipation here. Waiting to see what David Tua will do. And again, we're coming up to round number six. This is an area that a lot of the punters didn't think that we'd be in this area with David Tua. A lot of people expecting him to take Ahunani out in a hurry. So let's just see what happens. You see the sweat, but you notice another thing. David is not really sucking in the wind, so he's in really good physical condition for this fight. He's done a lot more running since his comeback has started. Here we go, round six. The Colonel Bob Sheridan here with Dale Husband at ringside and all our staff here at Maori TV. Hope you're enjoying it around the world and across New Zealand. We're in Auckland, New Zealand. David Tua in the black trunks. Friday Ahunanya in the white trunks. Friday stop, he's in that corner, and this is when David will take off. Ahunanya's been able to stay out of trouble, but David too is full of intent now. He's been coming forward, he's Fr using that right, he's been landing him just under the rib cage, as uh, Colonel Bob's been mentioning. On that left side of Ahunanya, he must have landed at least six or seven there, and he'll be looking to do the same. But two is in tremendous shape, and the power is still there. He really is just setting up Friday to uh, get away that big uppercut and put him away. But will Friday fall for Dave's toy? Well, time will tell. We're into round six. Well, David is still trying to line up the big shot. He goes with the jab. To Friday Ahunanya's credit, he's able to score the jab occasionally with David Tour. But David's got a chin of granite. You're not going to stop this guy with a jab. Now here's David again trying to get the body shots. David seems happy to land the body shots. I'd like to see him, well, he did what I wanted to say, step back and then unleash one hellacious uppercut, but he didn't let the uppercut go. He wants to punish the body, it looks like, of Ahunanya, and he has uh, ideas of knocking this guy a little bit later on. That's, uh, that's David's fight plan. Ahunanya is not showing the movement, and it's going to cause him problems because David will catch up with him. Ahunanya not doing a lot offensively. Every once in a while, he gets the jab off. You see the power of David there. That hook put Ahunanya back on his heels for the first time in the fight. Notice the left hand coming down now of Ahunanya. That's the body shots that we talked about. I think we counted six of them, Dale, and there's more to come. That time he missed the, his shot. He was going right for that uh, rib cage again. He's going for the very same spot, Colonel, as he works Ahunanya into the corner. We've seen him work him over in the corner. Ahunanya doesn't want to stay in there. He needs to, uh, to slide away. He doesn't to want to take anything on the chin. And, and because of that, in the early going, he's exposed his body. David, knowing the fight plan would probably be that, that he's taken the body. He's taken what he's given him. And he's punished his body to this point. It's not dramatic as what the fight fans would like to see, but there's another solid right hand just underneath that elbow. Coming to the last stages of round number six. And both fighters still very much in there. David Tua, well in control on the scorecard, the way that we read it. The crowd absolutely loving this, uh, uh, this bout here between these two heavyweight warriors. David landed one uh, decent left hook there while uh, you were commenting, Dale, and he hasn't landed the big powerful shot, and he hasn't taken the advantage of the uppercut. This is his first uppercut, but he didn't quite catch Friday. But that's the first time I've seen him throw it. Friday trying to trap him now as the bell ends in the sixth round. But Ahunan is not doing enough. Two is building up points. Well, it's a battle of attrition as we have a look through uh, round number six. We have David well and truly in front on the scorecard. But I think Ahunanya is leaving himself something. Tua gets a, uh, a, a, a loping left on. Putting some pressure on, but it's really that right hand body shot, the rip to the body. 
that has uh, paid well for Tour and is causing the problems for Ahu Nanya. The Nigerian through America out of Las Vegas. Here we go, round number seven. Tour in the black trunks. Ahu Nanya, the Nigerian from Las Vegas in the uh, white trunks with the white trim down the side. David blasts again to that left side of the rib cage. Tua is happy to take it as long as he'll give it to him. I'm still waiting for the uppercut. He's thrown one, but he, he didn't land it. Tua is getting into a second there motion now. He wants to pick it up. Ahunanya is able to tie him up on the inside. David needs to step back, push him off, step back, blasting the body again with lefts to the right side of the ribcage. That's the area of the liver. Now, David hits you with a liver shot there, you'll go down too. Remember, Ahunanya's never been down in his career and never been stopped. So he's tough, very he, tough. He must have a granite puku because he let some go that time. So it's the right hand left side, just underneath the rib cage. That will be the vulnerable area for Ahunanya. But really, it's all part of a strategy to set up for that uppercut. We know how lethal that is from Dave, Dave Tour. We haven't seen it yet, but certainly that's where he's heading. Both guys are showing a little bit of fatigue here because it's a very hot and humid night, but both a superbly conditioned for this fight. Nice left hook by Friday Ahunanya. That's the best punch that he's landed in the fight. But like so many people that land crisp shots to the head of David Tua, all you do is hurt your hand. <laughs> a granite chin of David Tua. The only time that I recall ever of David really getting rocked, he got hit one time by Ika Biabuchi and he got hit the one time in about the second or third round by Lennox Lewis that really sort of froze him in his tracks. Ahunanya it looked good and now his jab has been affected. There he is targeting that left side of the rib cage again because that's what Friday is giving him. Watch David try to pick it up here. And those hands are starting to come apart as he tries to protect both his chin and his rib cage. And David will be able to land the uppercut when he decides to throw it. He's setting him up for that. There's a left hook in the right hand. But he doesn't shift Friday. So Friday has a very solid chin because that right left hand and right hand would have dropped a lot of fighters. So Ahunanya is tough. There's no question about that. A nice stiff jab by Friday. The science of boxing. So many ways to win a fight. Plenty to lose, plenty of ways to lose them as well. So what we've had is some smart fighting in the opening rounds from Ahunanya and still leaving himself with the chance as we count down to the end of the seventh. Very, uh, well, well, many people never expected it to go to here. So Ahunanya is going well as David tries to finish off with the flurry. Well, uh, closing seconds now of the seventh round, but Ahunanya is not doing enough to win these rounds. David uh, goes downstairs again, and Ahunanya will escape the seventh round. The nice shots landed by Friday just before the bell, but I think a little bit too little, too late. Another two around. All right, so Friday the 13th being talked to by his trainer, Louis Tapia, and Layla Makata working over the ropes. We take a look at this replay, and this is why David's winning the rounds. He's doing most of the scoring, most of the heavy scoring. That was the best combination of the fight for David, and as you see, Ahunanya just before the bell comes back and lands a couple of punches himself, but he's not doing enough to win rounds. David is. David's doing what he has to do to win this fight, but he wants it to be dramatic. I expect to see him try to turn it up a notch as we go to round eight here. The Trust Stadium in Auckland, New Zealand. David Tua in black, winning almost every round unofficially of my scorecard. Ahunanya has fought well, he's fought smart, he's been able to land his jab, he's moved well, especially early in the fight. But David catches up with him from time to time, and you just have the anticipation that at some stage, David's up on his toes now. That's an adrenaline flow that he has, that he wants to try and take this guy out in this round. There he goes with the hook upstairs, blasts underneath that left elbow again. David has an adrenaline flow right now. He looks to me like a guy, when he starts moving his head, he reminds me a bit of Larry Holmes when Holmes was trying to finish guys off. And that's the way David looks to me right now. Blasting shots, throwing more of those left hooks. Haven't seen the big right hand. There it is, right on the chin. But it doesn't shift Ahunanya. But Ahunanya's not moving. Finally, he backs off. David tries to put his back up against the ropes again, and Friday holds him off. David needs to come with the uppercut. It's there right now. 
He's got Friday's left hand down. He's got him separating his hands because he doesn't want to get hit on either side of the jaw and doesn't want to be hitting the ribs anymore. So the uppercut right between them is there. And David must see it. He's trying to position himself to land it. He certainly is trying to get himself into position to let that big one go. And we know it's there. He'll be frustrated too that it is into round eight. He wants to send a message to the division and uh, nothing short of a uh, of an emphatic victory will, uh, will will help his chances. And so he's trying to finish this off, but this is a very, very tough fighter that he's up against here in Ahunanya. Well, it, as a matter of fact, in, in my score sheet, you know, he's doing what a fighter has to do. He's winning almost every round in the fight. There's the uppercut, but this guy Ahunanya can take a shot. And when he gets hit, it kind of gives him an adrenaline flow. A minute to go in the eighth round as the left hook again. David has landed a two or three times in a good body shot. Remember I talked about the hands coming apart? His eye went on you. You don't want to hot dog it with this guy. This is not a guy you want to play with. David fights all the time like a wounded tiger. You don't mess with a wounded tiger. David's by far not wounded at all, but you don't mess with a guy like that. Well, when you start doing the flamboyant uh, playing around stuff, you can see that uh, you can sense that you've got him hurt. So David must have sensed that too. The opportunities are starting to come. As the Colonel said, the arm's starting to come apart, leaving little holes, little gaps. Uh, the shots there downstairs, and obviously there's the big one that David is searching out. That's the big uppercut. But at the moment, well in control of the scorecards as we come to the end of round eight. And still a little bit more to finish off the round. David Tour. The big left hook, and the bell is coming up to end round number eight. Again, Ahunanya landed some jabs, but not enough to win the round. Well, already we're conscious that he's just not scoring enough, Ahunanya, and uh, Tua is taking advantage each round. There he is, a little bit of showboating. That says that you've lost focus and lost concentration, and that will be the sign that David Tua wants. Have a look at him in the corner there. He looks as though he could go another 10 rounds. I mean, he is very, very fit. And like I say, full of purpose, as he has been all the way in preparations for this fight. He knows how important it is. It's a payday for his whanau and a chance for him to look after them for a long, long time. Those opportunities don't come around too often in life. David Tui's trying to make the most of it. Here we go, round number nine. Everybody who's anybody in New Zealand is here tonight. My old pal, Georgie Calvin, the boys up from Christchurch. Dean Lonigan's done a great job with this setup with the guys from Zuko, and you're watching Maori TV, and this is pretty exciting. Not many people thought it would be into round number nine, but Friday has stood up to everything that David has been able to land so far. David hasn't been able to dump him, but David is controlling uh, the rounds pretty well. Also want to thank our production manager, Naomi Marsh, who's been working with me all week, and Boa Hathu will help us get prepared for the call of the fights, especially the undercard fights. Tua doing a nice job in round nine, trying to hunt this guy down. Friday gets off with the left hand and then slides away down the ropes again. David tries to stalk him. Friday faints. David right on top of him, right in front of him. David really needs to be off the left shoulder of Friday. And if he can't hit him to the head with a left hook, then blast him continually to that body. See that left arm keeping coming down by uh, Ahunanya. Ahunanya, though, is moving more like he was in the first round, first couple of rounds of the fight. Uh, this David hitting him that time he got a little bit more of the hip that he wanted to get he would have liked to get more into the sink that right hand into the ribs again but again I haven't seen that uppercut except for one time by David he's been throwing more of the hooks with the left hand trying to shift this guy he's landed a couple of pretty good shots and one good combination but hasn't been able to drop Friday the 13th back into the corner that goes David he is being forced to push uh, Ahunanya around the ring Ahunanya sliding predominantly to is left then he'll come back to the right staying out of trouble but he knows that he's being stalked this is serious stalking as he goes downstairs again to him the two downstairs work the one upstairs was well counteracted good defensive skills there by Ahunanya David looking for his opportunity David blasts again to the body Ahunanya is slick when he when he does move to David's left hook he waits till David is outside his punching area this guy is well schooled 
Tapi has done a nice job getting him ready for this fight. And, you know, usually when there's a fatigue factor, guys forget and they make mistakes. But Friday hasn't made a lot of mistakes in this fight. I think the times he's been caught in the ropes might be a little bit of fatigue. But he's doing, see, he moves to his left and moves to his right, especially when David is out of the kill zone range with that left hand. So he's fighting a smart fight. And it might be a little bit frustrating for David, but David's trying to move him into that corner, cutting him off, and pretty soon he'll attack him again. Friday, as long as he's up on his toes, and every once in a while he'll come out with that shot, but he can't hurt David too either. Friday threw the hook that time, whistle past the chin of David, but it didn't hurt him. David blasts the body. How Nanya is seemingly able to gobble up the power of David. David going with a jab, closing seconds again. Another round, not dramatic for David Tour, but Ahun Nanya not doing enough to win the rounds. David well in control on the card. The crowd like what they see. Round nine is in the books. And going to script pretty much for Roger Bloodworth and also for David Tour. They are winning the rounds, that's what's important. How you win, less important, David Tua said prior to the fight than the fact that you do win, and he's doing the right things to win. Boy, these are real heavy body shots, and uh, Friday's in great shape, and he's able to gobble it up, and David hasn't been able to drop him. He's only landed, like, two real good combinations during the course of this fight. I expect to see David try to pick it up. He'd like to turn the lights out if he possibly can with this guy. So let's see. He goes right for that rib cage again. Friday has got a bit of a second win as he's back up on those toes trying to move side to side. But again, I see David like I saw a couple of rounds ago that, you know, he's getting to the idea now that he wants to take this guy out. David's really chasing him down now, skipping after him. But what he doesn't want to do in his frustration is leave his feet when he throws his left hook because you lose your power. All his power comes from those huge thighs that he has with him. Big uh, rear end and, and that's where David uh, generates the great power. And as long as he's able to do that, he should catch up with this guy pretty soon. And as we've mentioned, stalking. And then you're trying to stay out of trouble, but surely his corner must know that he's got to start throwing some uh, some good shots and scoring punches. Because at the moment, the scorecard and time is playing against him. Ahunanya, if David gets in once again, into the red corner, you might see a few bombs unleashed here. He gets a nice one to the left hand uh, side of the face there. And that's a slip. That's just a slip, but there was a bit of a punch on the end of it. Now, will that ignite David Tua? Because Friday's sitting on the ropes right now. David is trying to close and get a show here. Caught him with the left hook. The crowd is in with the right hand. Crashes to the left side of the jaw of Friday Alamania. Where's the uppercut, David Tua? It's there. He continues to go to the body. He doesn't panic. He's just waiting for the shot that he sees clearly, and then he's going to pull the trigger. The chant goes up, Tua, Tua. Let Ahunanya off the hook. A little bit of a slip with a light punch behind it, and it's separated the legs of Ahunanya. And of course, the crowd in attendance thought it was a heavy punch by David, hence the reaction. But David wants to try to take him out, wants to try to take him out now. He's got a minute to do it in round 10. Tua. He's got him in trouble, Ahunanya. He's still got the power to it. Unfazed by that left jab there from uh, from Big Friday. Trying to set a trap for Friday. Trying to draw him in to throw the shot at him. David very cat-like right now. Trying to draw this guy into a, uh, what I would expect still that I haven't seen as a big uppercut. Now David bends down. David has a full confident look in his eye like he knows what he wants to do. Look at him make Ahunanya miss. Now watch David. He takes another deep breath, running out of time here in the 10th round with 20 seconds to go. But he's just trying to line him up, isn't he? He's got intent in his eyes at the moment, David Tua. Yeah, David's real clear in his eyes, and really, you get the idea that he knows exactly what he wants to do when things are going to his fight plan, except he hasn't dropped the guy yet. Well, it didn't happen for him in round 10, but it could in round 11. It we could at any time with this guy. We know that Tua is trying to knock Friday into Sunday, but it didn't happen in round 10. All right, so we're coming up to round number 11, a place that most uh, boxing fans, at least here in New Zealand, didn't expect it to be. But watch what David Tua does here. Friday gets off his shot, and that was just a little bit of a slip. 
And a lot of people thought that uh, sitting back that David actually hurt him. But right after that, David did a nice job. Look at the way he makes Friday out on you miss here. Coming up to round 11, it's championship time, and you can be sure that David Tua wants to try and at least drop this guy to make it real definitive. On my score sheet, it's very definitive anyway. I don't see, with the exception of maybe the first round, any round that uh, Ahu Nanya may have won, but I expect somehow or other the judges might have it a little bit closer than the way I have it. Round 11, the Colonel Bob Sheridan here with Dale Husband. You're watching Maori TV and hope you're enjoying it across the country of New Zealand and around the world. So now, David Tua. Lining up Ahunanya. There's still plenty of gas left in the tank. Anyone thought that they would tire themselves out and be holding on to each other in the 11th? Not so. It's a key point too, Dale, because it's very humid here. Both guys have worked extremely hard in this fight. As the right hand gets through to the jaw, but he hasn't been able to shift it. There's that body shot again. Straight through with the jab, but David Tua lands it. David wants to try to take him out, but I'm just surprised with the lack of uppercuts that he's trying to land with this guy coming in. Ahunanya comes in with his chin tucked, and David just hasn't unleashed that shot from kind of the Mike Tyson shot that comes from the floor. And that's what I really expected to see with David. David bends over and curls up a little bit as he throws backhanded left hands, but when he when he's in that position, what he's looking to do is to throw the right hand. And that's cause to pay tribute to uh, Ahunanya. Yeah, a big hard fighter 25 fights under his belt half as many as uh, as David Tua but he's performed creditably this evening if David doesn't knock him out Ahunanya has a career as an opponent against some other heavyweights that uh, are looking to position themselves in the top 10 heavyweights in the world where they won't take a chance with David Tua but Ahunanya hasn't been able to hurt David at all and that's what the top 10 heavyweights want to do is fight guys that might give him rounds a lot of people might say this is good but is David unleashing a barrage but again he doesn't hurt Friday Ahunanya I wonder if it's frustrating David I still say if David will come with a minute to go in the 11th round with an uppercut he could catch this guy and then drop him but he with all of his combinations and there's been about three to four nice combinations that he's dropped the left hand in there he really hasn't buckled the legs of Friday during the course of this fight that doesn't take uh, take anything away from David's power that goes to the credibility of the chin which we talked about before the fight but everybody had the hopeful anticipation that David would just walk through this guy but Ahunani has proved to be a worthy opponent for David Tua a very worthy opponent. I think the crowd here too, while they're definitely parochially behind David Tua, I can respect that they've, in uh, Ahunanya, we've got a very, very polished fighter and a very tough man. But again, I remind you that are watching, David's doing what he's supposed to do. He's winning every round of the fight. And if the judges see it the way I see it, the only way that Ahunanya could win is by knocking out David, and that's not gonna happen. David just crushed him with a left hook at the bell. Well, you know, well, I've got a tail uh, scored 110 to 100 going to the final round. I expect that the judges might have it a little bit closer than I have it, but I think David Tour is clearly out in front. Look at this combination here. Not able to shift Friday Ahunanya. Uh, great credit to Friday and his conditioning for this fight. And uh, great for David's conditioning, too, that he's as strong and certainly much stronger than he was in the... You know, the 11th round of this fight against Rockman, which was a draw. This is no place near a draw, in my opinion. This is all David Tua. Very good boxing and not being frustrated. You know, Mike Tyson had those fights against Bone Crusher Smith and Mitch Blood Green that he couldn't do anything except win every single round. So you can't have a knockout all the time. That's what people want to see, and that's what they think about at David. But to me, at his age, that he was conditioned well enough to go and fight this hard into the 12th round now is, is extraordinary. The crowd still is anticipation of a knockout and it doesn't appear like it's gonna to happen tonight. But again, with David's power, it could happen at any time. Well, harking back to uh, his original comment, it's about winning. And uh, that's what he's done. He's done it clinically. He has been in control of the fight from the get-go and really has not been threatened. And that's why he comes into the 12th and very good Nick. But has Ahunanya saved something for the 12th and final round. In a lot of ways, David Tua's stock goes up against the champions now because they're going to say, hey, this guy couldn't knock out an age of Friday Ahunanya. But the fact of the matter is, 
There might be three of the four world champions that couldn't knock him out either. David comes on strong. He's, he's not frustrated, but he's at a point that he'd love to drop this guy to put on the closing asterisk for the crowd. I tell you what, I think the crowd have had value for money here tonight. Great to see them out. Sold out house at Trust Stadium in West Auckland. With our friends watching through Australia on Fox and through Samoa. What you're seeing here is the resurrection of the heavyweight career of David Tua. A hiatus of nigh on five years as he worked through behind the scenes issues. But now he's back in the ring. And the New Zealand fight public are pleased about that as here comes one late burst from Ahunanya. Was he saving himself for the last minute of the fight? I don't think he was. I think that every once in a while he'll land a combination of punches. David's got a little bit of a frustrated look on his face. With a minute to go, he's not going to leave much left on the shield. I'll tell you, he's ready to go out. Let's see if he can drop Ahunanya. Ahunanya right now is in a survival mode. He's up on his toes. He'd like to land another combination. David can't land a big flush punch. I haven't seen the uppercut except for one time all night, and it didn't do anything but graze the jaw of Ahunanya. But David has done a nice job out boxing this guy. And I see David stock going up even more now that he wasn't able to knock this guy out. That's the way it works in the business of boxing. David has done what he came to do, and that's win this fight. 25 seconds to go. And as Dale described it, a, a fight that the people got their money's worth, both on Maori TV and around the world, wherever you're watching. David Tua, unable to knock this guy out, but putting pressure on at the very close of the fight. Right after Friday, and Friday escapes, David slips, and the fight is all over. And what a fight it has been. The crowd absolutely thrilled by what they've seen here. They were hopeful for a knockout. It wasn't to be. And I the scored. fight between David Tua and, of course, Friday Ahunanya goes the distance. Bob. I scored at 120 to 109 with every round just about in favor of David Tua. The first round could have gone either way. Other than that, I didn't see Ahunanya doing anything to win any rounds. Did a nice job surviving. Proved that he's got a really solid chin because David did hit him on some occasions. He did a nice job defensively, so he never took the flush shot. But his stock goes up too, does Fridays, because there are guys that might give him a shot at the title. Figured, well, if David Tua couldn't stop him, then maybe we could stop him. But. Uh, this guy might have a broken nose, too, and I'm sure he's got busted up ribs from the right hand of David Tua. Two to force. What a night of boxing it has been. What a night for David Tua as we await the decision. I'm quite sure that Tua will get the unanimous decision. We'll wait and see. Well, you'll be pleased with what you've seen from uh, David Tua. You've watched him for many years. In fact, you've got a cat named Tua as well. So, Colonel Bob. Your summation of, uh, of his performance this evening. Well, you know, again, everybody wanted to see him knock uh, out Friday Ahunanya. But he did what he had to do by, in my opinion, winning just about every single round in the fight. So with that said, I think it's been a very good night for David Tua. And his stock continues to rise in the heavyweight division with his performance tonight because it was a dominating performance against that underrated Friday Ahunanya. And so we'll have to wait for the dust settled, Colonel Bob, to find out as you say, the interesting international ramifications of tonight's bout. Well, we'll see what happens. Brad Vocali, Bob Gibson, and uh, Michael Hafley uh, are Once the again, uh, judges. So. Woodstock permanent color for me, bringing you probably the best heavyweight fight in the last couple of years. Give it up one more time for these two warriors! Lieutenant Dan Hennessy doing what he does so well, which is rock up the crowd. Did a nice job of him seeing tonight as well. And a spectacular six fight card out here in West Auckland. And the result that the Kiwi fans and Samoan fans wanted a win to David Tour. We'll get that confirmed shortly, but that's certainly the way myself and, uh, and uh, Colonel Bob Sheridan read the play. Let's go up and get the word. Referee Dan Hennessy. Dan has the score. Ladies Here and we go. gentlemen, after 12 rounds of heavyweight championship boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Will County scores about 109, 119. Judge Gibson scores about 
111, 117. And Josh Hefe scores the ball, 108 to 120. We have a unanimous decision, ladies and gentlemen. And still, the Asian Pacific are in the Well, the judges had it exactly the way we had it. One judge, Michael Hafey from Australia, gave every round a tour, which I expected that the other judges might have it a bit closer. And Bob Gibson and Brad Vokelli did have it a bit closer, but it was a tremendous victory for David Tua. In my opinion, he won just about every round of the fight as well. And the crowd very, very pleased with what they've seen here. David Tua has done it again. He's retained his title here. Kanakwa Dave, Talofa, congratulations. I'm sure that, uh, you know, there are a lot of New Zealanders who were riding every punch with you. And it might have taken 12 rounds, but you went out to win, that's what you've done. What do you like to say? Tihe, Maori ora. Kia ora, kia ora mo te mei, kia ora. E ngā hau e whā. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. First, samoa e tatoa i a i ele manu aulu. I uh, want to give uh, the utmost respect to uh, Brother Friday. Thank you very, very much for a tough test tonight. I really appreciate it. You know what it is? I can't take nothing away from Friday. He came well prepared. He gave me a real good test. I did the best I could. Obviously, uh, the knockout was, uh, was definitely what the fans came out for. But uh, win this one, hopefully in the next one. But it's all about you guys, about the fans. Thank you for, for all the support. Was he as tough as you expected him to be? He was more than uh, what I expected. Uh, but however, we um, had a very, very good camp. We were well prepared. However, uh, we didn't get uh, the excitement knockout we wanted. But we win this one and we look forward to the next. And we'll get to what the next might be in a moment. You've got plenty of fans back home in Samoa, across in Australia, all tuned in tonight, and the people of New Zealand. What do you want to say to them? Samoa, Tato, Aele Manu Oulu. Tato, Fafo, Livi, Ingamel, Fafta, Ile Tua. Fakalofa, La Yatu, Kiolana, Kato, Katoa. Malo, Ile Lei, Nisa, Pula, Minaka, Namaste, and Fafta, Ile Lava. Kia ora. Kia ora, and what can we expect from you next, David? What are your ambitions? Well, uh... Tonight, I'm going to Burger King. <laughs> again? Yep, again. Yep. Well, Burger King it is. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, New Zealand's heavyweight favourite, David Tua. Hi, I'm Mihiki Tatua, David Tua, unanimous decision, 12 round, impressive performance from David Tua. Ete, the fight is over, but stick around, we will wrap everything up right after the break, right here on the home of heavyweight boxing, Māori Television.